Forecasting my life has never been a strong suit of mine. In high school, my teachers, my mom, they were asking me, so what's your plan? What do you want to do with your life, with your future? I'm like, my future? I'm trying to figure out my life right now. <laughs> but if it wasn't for people in my life, like my cosmetology teacher, who encouraged me to join in the field of cosmetology, which I graduated, I graduated with my license in, or my mentors who encouraged me to pursue the career and my passion, rather, and spoken word poetry and putting on showcases around the city. I don't know where I would be today. So for the first few years out of high school, I was very passionate and focused on doing poetry. And then I cut hair to me on the side to be my sponsor for my passions, right? But I really never loved cutting hair. I liked it, but I didn't love it. And so, you know, I became really good at it still because I've always been creative. However, one time I was doing a haircut, I was getting a lot of fame. People was like really recognizing me. I was cutting like I cut famous people like, you know, Big Sean and uh, you know, Fabulous, you know, in the hip hop industry. I'm like, I feel myself a little bit. But I was doing a haircut with a guy, and I'm I'm over it, and I'm like, man, like I start out of nowhere, I started talking to God. I said, Dad, listen, I don't know why you got me here. What's the bigger picture of this thing? But I need, I'm not feeling it. Not like I feel when I'm doing poetry. I need to, I'm like, I kind of feel, I'm not, I'm not really going to connect with you. I need more out of this. Meanwhile, the guy who's here I'm cutting has no idea how over his haircut I really am. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it is what it is. But in conjunction with cutting hair, then it was cutting kids' hair, okay? If you knew me outside of, you know, my poetry, or you knew me outside of cutting hair, you would, you would know Vernon Jackson loved kids. I mean, I love the kids, and kids love me too. So much so that my church family called me the baby whisperer. <laughs> I was here. But in doing that, in volunteering, I was tethered to love and grace with the children. In cutting hair in the job, I was tethered to time and money. And cutting kids was one of the most challenging things I've ever had to do. I don't know what it was about walking to the barbershop and to the chair that had kids going nuts. I mean, snotty noses, sweating profusely. You know, if you have kids, you raise kids, it's like, you know, how alligators have the death row or whatnot, right? Kids have this thing they go like dead body limp, but they don't want to be bothered. Right? <laughs> and so it was, you know, and I had my time scheduled out for 15 minutes to do these haircuts. And I was always running late and I was frustrated because I didn't have time that too. So time and money was all messed up because I was late for all my other appointments. And but then there were cutting kids with different needs. Same age group, but times it by 10 sometimes. I mean the meltdowns the screaming, the crying, and a lot of times what happens is the parents would never call or give me a heads up on what I was going to you know, encounter, so I had no way of preparing. So everything was a surprise. And again, I was still late past it. There was a family that came in to Erica. Single mother, four kids, two boys, and, two, and those two boys were autistic. And I just about fit into the Erica process. I was over it before it happened. But it was moments like these that I had experienced multiple times before that the inspiration and idea that I should set aside time to cut kids with a designated time just for them with no one's around with special needs. But in the time, I was still focused and passionate about doing poetry and doing life in my own way. I have my own vision for my own head. That's, that's a good idea, but I'm going this over here. And I did it, and I did pretty good at it. But it just wasn't fulfilling as much. So one day, I am in the shop with my old, 
my old colleague, we're sitting there, and you know, I'm gonna ask him, what's his future plans? What do you wanna do? He's like, you know, I think I'm gonna buy my own shop, why not? Because at this, at this point, the shop that I was working in, was my, my friend's shop, it was had eight chairs in it, and it was like four of us left in the shop. So I'm like, you know, let's try to get a, you know, a litmus test. I like that word, litmus test. I felt smart when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in a litmus test, you know, um, what his plans were. And, you know, he, he told me the word. I said, dude, let's just buy this shop right here. We already got it, bro. Let's make it happen. He's like, yeah. I said, I'll go home and think about it. So he goes home, thinks about it, he comes back, and he said, let's do it. And so we put a trigger and we do it. Fast forward two years later, I'm out walking out with a, well, I'm, I'm out with a friend, I'm not at her job, and a young man walks up who's 18, who's on the spectrum, and she happens to be a speech pathologist. And me, her heart, and her care, and how she lit up, and she just, you know, welcomed him, and welcomed him in to the space that was like the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. And I, you know, I proposed, I'm like, yo, hey, you know what this crazy is, I've been having this idea to, you know, set aside time to do haircuts for kids with different needs at the shop. I said, Burn. Like, how can you not do that? Not, that? That face right there is enough right there. I was like, you know what? You're right, I'm gonna do it. I'm going, I'm going to think about it. I went home, I mean, every, I don't know what it was about that moment, maybe it was her face, I don't know. But I went home and I took the thought seriously. I started brainstorming, well, if I'm gonna do it, what would, like, what would I gotta come up with a name. And so the name I thought about was Get It, right? And I'm like, well, sometimes the name Get It is associated with, with kids that are like geniuses, whatnot, I'm like, but they're, but, but, People with different needs are geniuses as well. And I say, you know what? I'm gonna call it the Get It Event. There we go. Now, what I'm gonna do it? How to choose one of my off days? I am a man of my off days. You hear me? I can take my time. I just fork knocks. Can I get into it, right? <laughs> but I'm like, I gotta do it my off days. So I decided to do it the third Monday of every month for one to five. And I said, well, I'm gonna charge for it charge the same amount of money I charge for all the other kids doing a regular schedule time I have doing it. So there we go. I'll make a flyer, I'll post on Instagram. It's gonna hit. I mean look at a whole lot of people that want to get the kids done, right? Nah. <laughs> the first one had three. Which is fine, so we'll be working here. It wasn't empty. You know, but three came. But in between the first one and the second one, Magic started happening. In that time, I had a couple of my friends inbox me. One particular hit me up and said, Vern, can I sponsor a haircut? I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, I guess so. And then it happened again. And I made a post on my Instagram and said, yo, like, it's so cool how people are starting to rally behind these families and support by sponsoring haircuts. And out of the woodwork, people just started sending, like, how can I support? And at this moment, I started seeing how this is starting to, you know, to, to take hold. And I'm cutting kids' hair, so it's so no, it's what it is. The second one I had five kids. The third one had eight kids. It started getting looked because what happened was the word started spreading. People had since made children heard about what I was doing, so I started seeing families my way. I'm like, oh, this is wow. So I started recording the haircut experiences so that people can see and experience what I was experiencing. I'm like, this is wow. And what was so cool about this experience was like, being able to tell parents that the service was free. Wow. So as time moves forward, one of the videos I posted back in January of this year goes viral. It went viral. I'm like, I'm like oh, I'm like, I went to bed one night, woke up the next day, had like 14,000 views. Like, was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I checked it later on that afternoon. It was at 65,000 views. Like, this is Within two weeks, that video had garnered 3.3 million views. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's this day, right? It's this day. Listen, I know it gets better, right? It gets better. So, since then, I was, I was contacted by, you know, well, okay, to, today's show featured on their, on their page, Good Morning America featured on their page. I mean, J Lo commented said my video made her day. Oh. I know, I know. I had to hop in her DMs too. I had to. 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 I had
know, and then, you know, and, you know, Fox News will be online, live, and, and so much support was coming in around the world. And, and, and so it was not, it was not about me. It's about the bigger picture with these kids. That now, because the kid I've been viral with, my, my good friend Ellison, Ellison Eubanks, he, if, if you go back later on, you see the video, you see how beautiful his energy was. And a lot of times when kids come to see me, they have had bad experiences. Just like the one I mentioned to you earlier. Man, Jennifer, Jennifer Hudson had invited myself and Ellison's mom out to California to interview with her in studio. I'm like, this is, this is amazing. The beauty in how gifted works is this. The public gives the gifts of sponsoring the haircuts. And in return, are in a position to receive how their donations, how their sponsorship are creating memories and seeing how, how the kids are just love and how they're able to just come in and see how we're all interacting. The parents get the gift of making an environment of love that they, that they want their child to experience the life cycle all experience life. And in return, they receive the grace and be put into position for someone for the first time in a long time for a service that they would pay any amount of money for, they get to get it for free. I can't tell you the amount of time I have fathers in their pride, like I gotta give you something. I'm like, no, this is an opportunity that we both get to do this thing. And I get to give my gift of being patient, loving, that I've never had any other place. But whatever God was doing, he did right. Being patient, seeing the, seeing the child for where they are and how they are and not rushing them into a space that they're not ready yet. I allow them to be fully in their position and I follow them. They're not following me. And that way, they're seen. What's crazy is that family that I mentioned to you earlier, the mother of four, the two boys that were autistic, she reached out to me a couple months ago, and she said, I said, Bird, like, I'm happy for you, and the growth of your program is beautiful, but me and my family, we didn't receive the same love, the same energy from you. I said, you're right, and your perspective and your experience is totally valid, but back then, I was doing my job, but now I'm doing my mission. At one point in time, I was cutting hair to make a living, now I get to cut hair to make a difference. People ask me, man, bro, like, what's the, what's the next move for getting What do you have planned for? I mean, honestly, like, I never had a plan for my life. Like, I never had a forecast, right? But everything that has happened since the beginning of the story has been a surprise. And I think that if I ever had a forecast of my life, all those moments would not have been a surprise that I was able to receive. That being said, not knowing what the future may hold, but the future was right for gifted, and get to be then. Sometimes the best gifts are surprises. Thank you.